Hey everyone, it's Ali, and with Last Epoch releasing here in a few short days, I wanted to make a video going over everything you might want to know if you're considering making your own build for Last Epoch. Now, I know a lot of people are going to want to experiment and want to try their own things, especially with this being a new game, and I know a lot of people are not going to necessarily want to follow a build guide, so I thought going over everything is so you don't fall into any sort of traps or into any sort of bad decisions to be a very good idea. So this video, we're going to go over how to pick a skill, how to find things that would synergize with your skill, and a few of the things that people might get a little bit confused on, especially since this game works a little bit different than other ARPGs. And finally, we'll talk about how you could potentially min-max your build and what to do later on once you get to endgame. So first thing I want to talk about is going to be how to actually go about picking the skill that you want to play. There are going to be two groups of skills in this category. First is going to be the skills that are, I would say, league start friendly. This means the skills that can just immediately work on a naked level one character and you don't need any sort of specific unique or any sort of specific gear or roles on anything to actually make the build work. These are going to be the builds that I would really recommend for people and the majority of builds are going to fall in this category. The other category of builds are going to be builds that require very specific or rare unique items to actually make them work or need specific interactions to get them going and those are going to be the builds that you would play maybe as a second character or something that you would re-roll into later on once you get the specific items. Now really Realistically, most skills in the game are going to fall into first category where you can just immediately play the skill as most of the skills in this game are fairly well balanced and will do a fairly decent amount of damage just from the get-go. Now, it's a little bit hard for me to give you exact examples simply because there's so many different skills in the game. But what I could try to tell you here is try to go for something simple. For example, if you're playing a sorcerer and you're looking at, for example, fireball, just play a fireball build. Don't try to do something weird or wacky where you're using fireballs and you're hoping they crit, then spawn meteors and something like that. Just pick something very simple to where if you just want to play a meteor build, play meteor. Or if you want to play a fireball build, just play a fireball build. The other thing to keep in mind is try to pick something that has good synergy with the rest of what your class can do. For example, we're going to be using a skeleton mage setup that I have in this character as the example for most of the things that we're going to be talking about in this guide. And what I want to show you here would be an example of that. So for example, we are playing skeletal mage, but we're playing arc mage, which is specifically allowing us to only have one skeletal mage instead of having a large army of them. What we could do with this, because we have one large skeleton that deals a substantially higher amount of damage is we can then also pair it up with something like Dread Shade. Dread Shade is a buff for minions that typically makes it so that anything that has it applied on them does more necrotic damage. What we end up doing for Dread Shade is picking Lone Watcher so it only works on a single monster then picking up all for one which makes it so it doesn't have any sort of aoe buffs it's only going to buff the one specific monster it's on and give it 60 percent more damage while at the same time pick up egoism which makes it so that anything that has a dread shade on it always crits that means since i'm already playing a one minion setup with arc mage my arc mage will now always crit due to egoism have 60 percent more damage from all for one and gain other very nice buffs such as the massive amount of extra attack speed from blind fury these are the kind of synergies that you want to consider in your build and realistically it's not too difficult to go through all this if you look at a classic accolade and you look at all these skills and you might be a little bit overwhelmed you might be like oh that's a lot of skills to look at to find some synergies realistically it's not that bad so for example if you want to look at skeletal mage really quickly the easiest way to quickly scout this for anything that might be interesting about the skill is to look specifically at the big nodes that are hexagonal shaped there are going to be two types of nodes for every single skill they're going to be the circle ones and the hexagonal ones and the circle ones while offering some potential really interesting effects for example splinter dominion giving you two additional projectiles not going to really be game changing and they're just going to be small augments to what the skill can do while the big hexagon nodes are always going to completely change the way the skill works so for example arc mage only gives us one massive mage for example pyromancers might turn it into a fire base skeletal army and for example caromancers might turn it into cold base skeletal army finally we'd have something completely different such as death knights which turns all of my skeletal mages from range based skeletal mages into melee based skeletal mages doing this and just looking at every single skill and just looking at the big notes is typically the way you're going to find everything that is interesting about a skill and everything that's going to really really augment it now that's not the only case for example here we have volatile zombie which we could turn into a poison based zombie and make it vomit as well as giving the vomit extra chance to poison as well as potentially giving the volatile zombie a way to heal us through necromatic fervor not all of the interesting points are going to be hexagonal based but the ones that are most likely going to offer you some sort of guidance in terms of how to put your build together are going to be like that the other thing that i want to talk about is going to be last epoch tools last epoch tools is basically the wiki of the game and it has info on literally every single thing in here what this will allow you to do is for example if we go over to resources and go to items and then type Dreadshade in here, we can then look at everything in the game that is related to Dreadshade. This will show me that there is a set bonus 
for Judge Shades, there is a item prefix that specifically rolls on body armor that gives it additional levels if we need more Judge Shade levels, as well as there being some set items that make sense with it. Now, ideally, you'd pick a build that wouldn't require a specific item to become powerful, but that item would instead be something you can add onto your build to make it substantially stronger as you get further into endgame. So a good example here for my build would be Lich's Gorn. Lich's Gorn would give you specifically 1% cold penetration for any minion affected by Judge Shade per intelligence. Well, that effectively means that with this item, once I would get Lich's Gorn, I could potentially then pick up Crowmancers, then start stacking a large amount of intelligence, and then have the Lich's Gorn give me a lot of cold penetration, while at the same time giving me other useful stats, such as a bunch of intelligence and a bunch of word retention, which might make me then go, oh, I should probably play a word-based build since I'm stacking so much intelligence, and since intelligence is giving me additional word retention. Now, the other really powerful portion of Last Epoch Tools that we should talk about is going to be the Build Planner. The really nice thing about this is, is that it has every single thing about the game inside of it. So if I were to, for example, be trying to plan some sort of necromancer setup, I can set my class specifically necromancer. I can specifically go to the skill section and sit here and pre-plan exactly how I want my setup to look like and see exactly how I can fit all my points and how to pick up everything as well as giving you a little bit more information that the game doesn't readily provide. For example, base stats of the skill. And the really nice thing about this is, for example, let's say I'm new to the game and don't know where all the stats can fit on an item. What I could do is specifically click on chest plate and this allows me to see every single base chest plate in the game and all of the unique items so i can specifically see everything that can fit in this slot and for example if i wanted to for example go for a crafted item i could pick something like an immortal regalia and then i can go over to the prefix tab and then suddenly here are every single prefix i can go on my chest plate so i can use this as a way to for example very easily tell oh on a chest plate i can put minion health so then i could pre-plan a chest plate with something like this where it has minion health and if we want the second prefix on here we could also put additional levels to skeletons and if we want to look at the suffixes we can see oh we can also get for example flat armor on a chest plate and we could for example also add on dodge rating this would be a very quick way for me to very quickly set up something and see how all my gear would look like if i want to pre-plan that far all i'd have to do is then hit save and now suddenly the chest plate is a part of my setup and i could use this as a way to figure out everything ahead of time if you do want to pre-plan the other thing to mention here is to consider where these items actually come from now typically most items in the game are going to just be random drop now the way these items are going to work and this is looking at Tunk Lab, which will be linked in the description below as well, is they're going to have a reroll chance. That means that anything with a 0% reroll chance is going to be very common. For example, for my build, I'd most likely want to use a Death Rattle since it's going to synergize really well with my current setup. As we can see here, there are 15 total amulets that have a reroll chance. That means if I were to ever go and do a monolith that specifically had some sort of reward on it that gave me something. For example, here, Fall the Outcast is giving me specifically bows. If I were to go farm the monolith that gave me specifically amulets, I would time i did the drops a unique or set amulets node it would give me a 1 in 15 chance of getting a death rattle now the same is also true for runes of ascendance this would be another way for you to be able to obtain any sort of unique you want if i really really needed a death rattle to make this build work i can either save up all of my rune of ascendance if death rattle is the major item for this build that makes it all become substantially stronger and use all my runes of ascendance on amulets to attempt to roll into a death rattle the other thing to mention here about how the reroll chance actually works is the higher the reroll chance the less common the item is going to be what it would first do is it would randomly pick one of the 15 amulets on this list so that means it could pick orient's eye the problem here is, is that orient's eye has a 97 percent chance to be rerolled so if the game did internally pick an orient's eye it would then roll a dice and if you won the three percent roll then you would keep the orient's dice but if you lose a 97 percent roll then it would instead pick a random amulet and it'd do the same thing again if it picked, for example, a Locket of the Forgotten Knight, you'd have a 70% chance for the game to re-roll it again until you actually win a roll and keep the item. That means for anything with 0% chance, if the game decides the item is a death rattle, then you just keep the death rattle. You don't really need to remember all this. All you have to remember is just the higher the re-roll chance, the less likely it is for you to get an item. Now, for the other items on here with no re-roll chance, that means that these items are drop only. So, for example, if I really needed an Eye of the Storms to be able to make my build work, as we can see here, it's dropped specifically by Empowered Lagon only, which is one of the the bosses for the monolith so we would have to specifically go to any of the storm we would have to specifically go and fill up our stability and then fight the boss and then we'd have a chance to get it the thing to mention about this is item rarity does apply to it so in this case in fall the outcast at 50 percent item rarity so that means the drop rates of this eye of storms would be twice as high this means that getting some items from the monolith bosses is actually pretty easy to do and in my case where i need lich's corn which is a boss specific drop item it would actually be very quick for me to get the item 
The next thing I want to talk about, which a lot of people, I believe, don't really understand how they work because this game has a completely different system than everything else, are ailments and damage over times. Now, ailments in this game work completely different than every ARPG. Typically, in an ARPG, if you had 100% chance of ignites, you would apply an ignite every single time, and typically that ignite will only be a single damage instance, and you won't really be able to scale more unless something actually allows you to have more ignites active at the same time. In Last Epoch, all ailments in the game stack pretty much infinitely with the exception of frailty. That means that if I had 100% chance of ignites and I did three attacks per second, I'd be applying three ignites per second and all three ignites would deal damage individually. The other nice thing here is if I go over 100% chance of ignite, that means my chance to apply additional stacks increases. So if I had 150% chance of ignite, I'd always apply a stack with a 50% chance for additional one. If I had 200%, that means I always apply two ignite chance. If I had 300%, I'd always apply three ignites and so on. The other thing to mention here is that the base damage does not matter at all. Unless your skill in the tree specifically specifically has something that specifically increases the damage over time of the skill, it does not apply to it. If, for example, a passive point says more damage with hits, that hit damage is completely irrelevant if you're trying to use the skill as a way to apply a bunch of dots really quickly. Dots have their own scaling, and if we were to go over to the character panel and look at other, you can see everything related to your dots in here. As you can see, for example, in my case, I have a 0% chance to bleed, and my base bleed damage is 77, while at the same time also having a 3 second duration. I might have some points on some skills that specifically say your damage with bleeds is increased by 100%. That mean the 77 base damage is then increased to 140. And I might have some other points on some skills that would, for example, say your bleed duration with bleeds applied by the skill have a 40% longer duration. That means instead of a three second duration, I'd have a five second duration on my bleeds applied from that skill. At the same time, typically most roles will not actually apply to these. So for example, if you were to crit with the skill, the ignites that would come from that crit does not also get changed in any way. Unless something specifically says applies to dots, it will not apply to your bleeds, your poisons, your ignites in any sort of way at all. Now, generic increases will. So for example, if I have a bunch of generic fire damage all over the place, because my ignite does do fire damage that will apply and increase my ignite damage at the same time things like damage over time will apply to it as well the nice thing about this game is that all dots do damage at a consistent rate and there's no way to really change this so realistically stacking as much duration as possible is a good thing there's also a really good case for poisons because poisons specifically shred poison resistance for the first 30 stacks meaning that if you're playing any sort of poison based build you want to always be applying at least 30 poisons and if you can't hit 30 poisons you'd want to make them longer so you can actually always have 30 poisons to make all of your poisons overall deal more damage the next thing i'm going to want to cover are going to be loot filters so because last epoch is a game where there's no identification that needs to be done that means Every single item that drops on the ground will immediately identify. Because of that, and because Last Epoch has an amazing built-in loot filter that you can add as much as you want and add whatever you like to it and make it as specialized as you'd want in whatever way you need it to be, you can specifically make it so your filter will only show you loots that you want for that specific build. This means that we can get very highly specialized filters, and because of that, we can make it really easy to filter all the bad loots and only see either items that have a decent amount of fixes on it that we care about or only see items that make sense for a class as there are some items in the game that are class restricted. Now, you don't have to go into as much detail as I do for my filters and these are going to be something that are going to take you a little bit to get used to and how to put them together. But some basic tips I might be able to give you for these loot filters is to, for example, set up something like this where you are going to be able to see every single affix that is relevant for your build. For example, I would set up a condition for a fix. I would select every single affix that makes sense for me. For example, I would specifically turn on all of my class specific affixes if I'm an accolade and then make it a really bright and colorful color. So every time an item that drops that has a class specific affix on it, a good example of this would be something like a helmet dropping with additional levels to tornado, for example, I would be able to see it and pick it up. These additional levels to skills are quite rare and typically finding a piece of gear that has specifically the additional levels that you want and good stats on it, it's very, very unlikely to happen. So realistically, we're going to want to do is you're going to want to see all these class specific roles. You're going to want to pick them up put them in your forge and then specifically use a rune of shattering to delete it while at the same time getting those item shards so you can craft whatever you like. Now the other beautiful thing about loot filters is these are really easy to share and really easy to export. So if you're too afraid of making your loot filter, if this looks like way too daunting of a task to make something like this, the nice thing is, is most build makers are going to provide a loot filter that makes sense for their build. And at the same time, Last Epoch Tools does just have a loot filter section on it, which is a new feature that they've added recently that people have been slowly been adding more and more loot filters to it, which have highly specialized filters 
for whatever you'd like to play. So for example, as we can see here, Dammit has ended up making a flute filter for Primalist, Mage, Sentinel, Acolyte, Rogue, which are just generic filters that are really good if you want to level that specific class. Now, if you want to play something a little bit more specific, for example, if you want to play a Squirrel build, Berg over here has made a loot filter specifically for a Squirrel setup on a Druid. Now, I can't speak for how good all these filters are. Some of them are going to have different levels of depth and different levels of of usefulness some of them might be a little bit too strict some of them might be a little bit too basic but if you want to just find a general loot filter this is a good way of doing it unless you're specifically following a build guide which typically will have a loot filter tailored to it added onto the guide itself now finally what i want to talk about is going to be it to have realistic expectations for your build. Last Epoch has an infinite scaling mechanic called corruption in endgame. And because of that, not all builds are going to be equal. For example, playing something that's a little bit meme -y or a little bit off meta just for fun because a build seems interesting to you is obviously not going to be able to push as far into corruption as a meta build might be able to. The beautiful thing about this is, is that you can pretty much bring every single build to its absolute limits. Because for example, if you're playing your little meme travel skill based build, you might be able to clear 300 400 corruption pretty comfortably but you'll not be able to do a thousand corruption that's fine because 300 400 corruption will still feel challenging for your build which means that you'll have a good time with it and you'll be able to do difficult content with it there's always going to be difficult content for every single build so you can scale the difficulty to what you need it to be without it being too difficult or too easy now with that said i will tell you that you most likely are not going to immediately make a skill or a build that's going to push into the thousands of corruptions and be able to farm it very easily but you most likely are going to be able to get a build that's going to farm at least a few hundred corruptions with no problem the beautiful thing here is is that you can still get quite a lot of loots at lower corruption levels and then you can either keep upgrading your build and minmaxing it to push to further corruption levels or use it as a starting point to get some more powerful items for those builds that i mentioned at the start of the video that require specific items to get going and then potentially re-roll to something else that seems interesting to you because last epoch is such an open-ended game and because the re-rolling is so simple to do in this game it's very easy to start with the build get a cool item be like oh wow that item looks sick i want to play around it and just go and make that build and within a day or two start farming and having fun in endgame and that's all that we have to talk about for making your own build i hope this answers some of your questions and i hope this helped you be able to at least find a way for you to start planning your build if you do plan to make your own build and i hope you have fun with it if you have any questions on anything related to last epoch or any questions on anything that i've discussed and you'd like to talk about it further feel free to leave a comment in the description below i'll be more than happy to help you as soon as i can i also stream on twitch every single day so if you'd like to come there and ask me personally or just come hang out with all the cuties i'll be more than happy to answer your questions there we'll be playing last epoch for the next few days leading up to the launch and i'll be playing last epoch exclusively for the next month to month and a half while we wait for the next path of xl season to start so i'd be more than happy to see you there and i hope you enjoy the rest of your day